A thermal imaging camera that easily fits into your pocket has a large touchscreen display and can capture not only high-resolution images in the infrared range, but also in the visible spectrum. This is exactly what the new pocket thermal imaging camera from Hike Micro promises us, specifically the E03. What we can really expect from this compact thermal imaging camera, what it has to offer, and whether it lives up to its promises. This is what we'll thoroughly explore in today's video. I hope you're as excited as I am, so let's dive right in after the intro. But if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel now and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. You can find the current prices of this device in the video description below. Thank you for your support and let's get started after the intro. In past videos, I've introduced you to some thermal imaging cameras from Hike Micro. From a small USB Type-C thermal camera for smartphones to a handheld device for various applications. By the way, if you haven't seen those videos yet, definitely check them out. I'll link them for you up here on the info card, because in today's video, I have another special device for you. Essentially, a pocket camera, namely the E03 from the Pocket series. A compact device with a large display and touchscreen function, as well as two separate camera systems. This is what this model from Hike Micro promises us. But what the camera really has to offer, how it performs in practice, and whether it's worth investing in, that's what we'll thoroughly examine in today's video. There's not much to see on the product box, so let's start right away with the contents. Let's see what's included. From the product box, we get the thick stack of paper at the top, consisting of a calibration certificate and the user manual in a total of six languages, followed by the actual device in a separate carrying case, and finally, a cable and a wrist strap are included. The practical thing is, just like with the previously introduced Mini 2 with USB Type-C connection, this camera also comes with a handy carrying case. As you can see, there's a metal belt clip on the back. This allows me to easily attach the bag to my belt, leaving my pockets and hands free, and of course, the camera is well stored and always right there. And now I have it in my hand, the compact pocket camera from Hike Micro, the E03. I don't think I've promised too much. The device is really super compact, extremely thin, and can be easily stored or transported. For those who want some numbers, the camera is 138 millimeters wide, 84 millimeters high, and just 18 millimeters thick, making it, as mentioned before, very, very compact and easy fitting into one hand. Furthermore, this camera weighs only about 218 grams. Thus, it's certainly not comparable to the small USB Type-C camera, but still a lot lighter compared to the previously introduced Eco series, as you can see nicely in the diagram. The camera's housing is definitely made of plastic, but as you can see, it's fully coated with rubber on both the front and back. This not only makes the camera feel very good in the hand, but also makes it completely splash-proof, i.e. IP54 certified. It will certainly withstand certain falls as well, but to prevent this from happening, there is a suitable wrist strap included in the package. This can be mounted on the lower right side. Personally, I would recommend definitely attaching the wrist strap, because in my testing, the camera almost slipped out of my hand several times, but that was due to incorrect handling. I would personally recommend holding the camera not mistakenly like a smartphone when taking photos, but hold the camera like this, with the thumb on the front and the fingers on the other side. This gives you a super perfect grip, and that's how the camera is designed. As you can see, there's a large thumb rest on the front. This way, you really have the camera securely in your hand and can easily take photos or videos. Alternatively, there's option number two, if you don't want to hold the camera continuously in your hand. For this purpose, there's a small one-quarter inch thread on the bottom, allowing us to easily mount the camera on a tripod. Next to it, on the left side, is the port for charging the camera. 
As you can see in the middle, there's a USB Type-C port. Personally, I find this extremely practical because it allows me to recharge the camera using the cable from my smartphone. By the way, the E03 relies on a built-in lithium-ion battery of unknown capacity. The device thus lasts around 3.5 to 4 hours of continuous use in practice. As mentioned, it's charged via USB Type-C, which takes about 2 hours in practice. Not to forget the small holes. Below them are the microphones for video recording. But more on that later. I would suggest let's activate the camera first because for that we find two buttons on the top. This means operating the physical buttons is extremely simple. One for activation, hold down the button for longer, and the button next to it for taking photos. The remaining settings are done via the touch screen. The first thing that catches the eye after activation is the built-in display. As you can see, this is a large 3.5-inch LC display, which has a nice slim bezel and provides enough space for the touch function on the display. By default, the device's brightness is relatively low, which of course saves power and, in my opinion, is perfectly adequate for indoors. On the other hand, here in the studio or outside in the sunlight, it's too dark. But that's not a problem, because if we swipe down from the top, we automatically enter the menu selection. Here, we can adjust the brightness using the slider. This makes the camera sufficiently bright, both here in the studio light and outside in sunlight. Overall, I must say I'm very satisfied with the user interface and the implementation of the E03. The display is sufficiently large and, as you can see, not overloaded. Nevertheless, on the display, I have the most important information directly, such as the center temperature, the highest and lowest temperature, and also the most important settings on the right and left. If I now want to make further adjustments, I can do so at the bottom left on the gear icon. And as you can see, the display or touchscreen is also very responsive and direct, so if I tap anything, I don't have to wait forever for the next window to open. The settings on the home screen, as mentioned earlier, are, in my opinion, completely sufficient for the majority of use cases. For instance, when I pull down the bar from the top, I can directly adjust the brightness of the display here. On the right, I can choose whether I want to use the light or dark mode. Right next to it, I can activate the flashlight on the back side so I can navigate in dark rooms or take photos in the dark. And finally, on the left side, I can mirror the device's screen to a larger display. Yes, you heard that right. The device has a built-in LED, as a special feature of this camera is capturing the visual, i.e. the area visible to the human eye. For this purpose, we find two cameras on the back side. One for the infrared recording and one for the visual recording, just like on a smartphone. Let's take a closer look at the data of the built-in sensor and you'll quickly notice that it's actually identical to the Eco variant introduced earlier. Firstly, this device has a field of view of a total of 50 by 50 degrees. This, in my opinion, is more than enough to capture medium-sized objects at close range. Regarding the resolution of the infrared sensor, the camera looks pretty good, basically the same as the Eco variant. By default, we have a resolution of 96 by 96 pixels here. Additionally, the device also features a so-called Super IR function again, just like the Eco device. This brings us to a maximum resolution of 240 by 240 pixels. And as you can see in the diagram, this camera is also quite advanced in this regard. In practice, this allows for very high resolution images to be taken, especially given the price. This applies to larger objects such as houses to find thermal bridges, for example, but also smaller devices such as electrical installations or the like. Regarding temperature, the E03 enables a range from minus 20 to a maximum of 350 degrees Celsius. As you can see in the graph, Hike Micro has slightly reduced the maximum temperature for this device compared to the Eco variant, namely to the level of the Mini 2. However, I would say that this temperature range is still sufficient for the majority of use cases. If, for example, you want to capture a melting furnace in heavy industry, then that will probably be quite difficult with this camera. 
Another major advantage of this device is, as mentioned earlier, that we have two cameras built in, an infrared camera and a camera for the visual range, because in the settings we can now choose which camera we want to currently use. In this regard, we can choose between infrared, a fusion of both, and a purely visual camera. From practical experience, I can say that this feature is extremely beneficial, because with the normal infrared camera, I don't always see what I currently have in front of the camera, or what I've photographed, especially when reviewing the photos. To avoid this, I can simply switch to the visual camera, take another photo here, and afterwards see exactly what object I've really photographed with the camera. Or I use the fusion. This means the benefits of both cameras. Press the button in the middle, and as you can see, in the fusion view of these two cameras, the objects are much more visible. This means I have the outlines of the objects, I can read text and so on, but still have the advantages of the normal thermal camera. The results of the three modes look very good in my opinion. The only thing I noticed here is that in the fusion view, there's a slight offset with particularly close-up photographed objects. For example, with the hand that I have displayed in the video here, you can see that both images, visual and infrared, do not completely overlap. This may be a bit unusual, but in my opinion, it's not a really big problem in practice. By the way, the visual camera has a resolution of 0.3 megapixels. This is definitely not much, especially compared to a smartphone, but it is sufficient to take appropriate recordings here. This device has a storage of a total of 4 gigabits, which is enough for numerous photos. As you can see, the device has a really extensive range of functions. I could continue this further, but I would say that we're now coming to a final conclusion. Overall, I can really say nothing else other than the E03 from Hike Micro is a very, very good thermal camera. The device shines with numerous features such as a large touchscreen, the fusion of two cameras, and of course, the best part, the camera is in a super handy pocket-sized format, so it can always be easily carried along. So, my recommendation is for all those who are really looking for a super compact thermal camera, who don't want to miss out on all the practical features, and who regularly work with this camera, because, as I said, it's extremely compact and always effortlessly fits in the pocket. Yes, and now it's over to you. What do you think of this pocket thermal camera? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I would say if you enjoyed the video, then please show your support with a thumbs up to help out. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel now and activate the bell to never miss a video again. You can find the current prices of these cameras, as mentioned earlier, in the video description below. Many, many thanks for your support, and with that, take care until next time.